everybody, it's Abby. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to be talking about some tips or thoughts on if you want to try going cruelty free. I know a lot of you that watch me are probably not cruelty free. Some of you have talked about that you want to try, but um, it can be kind of difficult. Even when I started, I did so much research and it was still a little bit difficult. So there are a ton of great resources um, on how to go cruelty free or about which brands, which products are cruelty free or vegan even. And, but you clicked on my video, so I'm going to give you my advice and, and tips on that. Number one thing to remember when you go cruelty free, especially if you are, you know, a person online, you maybe you have your own blog, your own social media, um, I don't want to say presence, but you know what I mean. And you see a post of other people, it can kind of get a little frustrating seeing other people use products that aren't cruelty free or or the worst part of it, I think, is people who are vegan and cruelty free like myself that are really some kind of way about it. Like, you have to be perfect. And I don't think that's fair. I think, you know, everybody starts somewhere and not everybody goes mm -hmm. vegan cruelty free. Not everybody goes vegan cruelty free overnight. So it is a process. It's, I've actually still going through products that I have that are not vegan or that I've changed my cruelty free status with so so my number one tip is just not to listen to those those militant like all or nothing vegans or cruelty free beauty um, influencers that will try to tell you that you're not doing enough and you are any step is good enough um, so I mean you know, the ultimate goal is to be completely cruelty free like or completely vegan if you're going that way but it takes time and baby steps I think is very important especially if you're not the kind of person who can just quit something cold turkey <laughs> no pun intended so also my tip is to come up with I mean is if you don't have like in a ridiculously large like Alex drawer full collection is to uh, make it makeup inventory this can also help you if you are kind of like me going through like the makeup rehab thing where you want to be more mindful of your purchases and see what you have, use what you have. I think making an inventory and then marking the things that aren't cruelty free or aren't vegan and just to help you know like okay 50% of my collection roughly is not cruelty free or 10% or of my collection is not cruelty free so it really puts into perspective for you how far you have to go so like if you, you know if you have 50% of the stuff you're like oh shoot you know it's gonna take a lot more time than if I only have a few things that already aren't cruelty free then that also helps you to keep better track of how old your makeup is because I've had products that are so old that I forget to use and then they expire and you don't want that to happen you want to get use out of stuff before it expires or goes bad or if you want if you don't like it then you can realize that and then give it to somebody else or donate it or whatever but for a lot of people, going cruelty free isn't overnight. You will most likely want to, if you have a smaller collection, you can use up their products and then as you replace them, buy cruelty free options. So that's what I did with like foundations and, and everything. Just use up what you have that's not cruelty free. Let's so say like if I use up all my foundations or use up the ones that aren't cruelty free, then I'll buy a new one that is. Or in like mascaras or whatever it may be, you know, like eyeshadows and lipsticks are going to be a lot more difficult to do that with so those you may want to consider um, decluttering those or trying a pan that palette I mean if you don't have that many to begin with if you have like 50 palettes and that's going to be um, not possible <laughs> so it usually takes like about a year to use up a makeup palette and you probably will get frustrated at some point I know I have a few times but it's, it's end up, ended up working out in the long run but there are some products that you may not be able to find right away a replacement for so the number one thing that I've been struggling with lately is um, a glitter glue or glitter primer because I have the Kat Von D Saint Center palette has a lot of glitter shades. I have some other um, eyeshadow things that I like to use a glitter glue with just to like duo crumbs and things to keep them um, bright and vibrant. And the glitter glue that I had was from NYX but it wasn't vegan so I, I scoured the internet trying to find a cruelty free glitter glue. Um, like, because I don't use Too Faced because they're owned by a parent company, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but then I looked and looked and looked, could not find one, so I was like, I forget it, I'll just never be able to find one, you know, until some another cult free brand pops up. But apparently, Elf has a glitter 
primer. I didn't even think to look for e.l.f., so um, I'll get one of those next time I order from e.l.f. or if I ever see it in a store, which I've never seen that in a store, so I might have to order online. Which, it's only like $2 anyways, so like in the Too Faced one, if I were to use that, it's like $20-some dollars. So there are accessible cruelty-free options at the drugstore, so like e.l.f., uh, Milani, Wet n Wild, those are probably the best. If you have a Target near you, Sonia Kashuk is cruelty-free, and so is Pixie. So like a lot of people start out with e.l.f., and if you are interested in being vegan, all of e.l.f.'s makeup products are vegan. Um, a few of their older brushes aren't, just because they have animal hair, but their newer brushes are, are fine. So again, I'm not keeping a list, I don't know what number of tips I would be on right now, but another a piece of advice is to use this website called Logical Harmony. I've talked about her so much on my channel, but that is the best resource. Like, a lot of her traffic probably comes from me, like, just looking up stuff. But she has a comprehensive list of brands that are certified cruelty-free with her, brands that are not, or brands that are kind of iffy with their status, and there's also brands that are pending that haven't contacted her at all or she hasn't heard anything about. So. What I'm doing on the process of right now is only using brands that are certified by her. She has a different process than some other um, companies that list cruelty-free brands like the, like PETA and Leaping Bunny, all those places. She has a little bit of different standards and they're a little more strict, um, just to, which I trust her process and I trust the brands that work with her more than other, um, other companies that do the, the cruelty-free list. So. And she also has guides for brands at Ulta and Sephora, Free People, um, a whole bunch of other stores, and she does detailed vegan product lists on certain brands. So I would definitely check out her website. It's logicalharmony.net. Another thing with that, um, she has kind of changed her stance, which we kind of, like at the same time, we flip-flopped. Like, so she was only supporting brands that were not owned by a parent company, and I was supporting brands that were owned by a parent company. But then we kind of flip flopped like at the same time. So, but she always is so great about mentioning like if she talks about a brand, she'll say if they're on my parent company or not. So, if you're new to cruelty free, what that means is that. So, just for example, NYX, right? They are owned by L'Oreal. L'Oreal is not cruelty free. So therefore, some people consider NYX to not be cruelty free, even though they are like NYX as a brand is cruelty free. But since you know, if you own a company, you're getting money from them. So L'Oreal is earning money every time you buy from NYX. So some people are okay with that, some people are not. I think that personally, like I mentioned before, you need to just baby steps, and if that's cool with you, then that's great. Um, it's I think that buying from a company like NYX, who is cruelty-free but owned by a parent company, is better than buying from a blatantly not cruelty-free company. But still not as good as buying from an independently cruelty-free brand. So, And then also there is a cruelty-free thing where some brands will claim to be cruelty-free but they will sell their products in China. There are a lot of um, things about this online. Logical Harmony has some information about this. But basically for a company to sell their cosmetics in China, in mainland China, I think like Hong Kong or somewhere is an exception, but the Chinese government requires them to pay for testing on animals and to be able to sell in China. So brands that do sell in China are not considered cruelty free, at least by myself. Um, like one brand that comes to mind mentioning this is Stila. Stila used to sell in China. They used to, you know, have to pay for the testing and everything. But then they actually removed their products from the Chinese market, which is like a huge step because NARS went the opposite direction. So NARS was cruelty free, they didn't sell to China, but then last year they started selling in China, which meant they had to test on animals. So like that was a huge uproar in the cruelty free community about that. So to kind of wrap this up, I think that um, it can kind of be overwhelming at first, but if you just take it slow, just maybe start replacing your products or even like scroll through the cruelty free list and then like maybe go to Ulta one day and just kind of browse around and see all the brands that are going to be on that list that you can choose from so it's not really limiting you it's honestly I feel like my horizons have expanded since I've been cruelty free because I've discovered so many new brands that I have never tried before or even never seen before until I was cruelty free so and also cruelty free makeup like some people think that cruelty free makeup is not as good as normal makeup but it is like all the brands you like like Too Faced, Urban Decay I mean they're all my parent companies but but like the quality of the products is does not diminish when you don't test on animals. So 
are just testing on animals is just a barbaric, outdated practice that needs to just go away. <laughs> like, I don't understand how it is still in practice today, so. Hopefully this was helpful. Let me know what your biggest concerns are. We'll answer some questions in a future video. Um, or the hardest thing for you if you're trying to go cruelty free. And yeah, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.